Shooting a time lapse is not a science. There's no perfect formula to allow you to be successful every time. However, there are a few things you can do to improve your chances. In this video, I want to show you the different types of tools I use when I shoot a time lapse. The first thing you need to do is find a way to trigger your camera, and there's a few different options that exist. Now depending on the camera you're using, you might have an interferometer built in. However, when I shoot a time lapse, I use one of four options. The first is the Canon interferometer. Now one thing to keep in mind about these ones here is this is my second one, and I've frayed the ends on both, so that's just something to be aware of when you purchase these. The second option is the no name variety, which uh, this was purchased from Amazon, but you can purchase it from other uh, online avenues as well. What's great about this one is that it does everything the Canon intervalometer does. However, if you have any issues with your ends, you can replace them. These are, these are detachable, um, so if, you have, uh, if it frays in the end, you can just replace that cable. The third option is the battery grip with intervalometer built into it. This also was purchased online. I think I got it from eBay. And what this came with was two batteries, a cable release remote, and the grip itself for under $100. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this one is it's a little bit flaky. Um, there's been a few times when I've lost control of my aperture ring, so I've had to take this out and then reattach it for it for me to gain uh, control of the aperture ring again. So just, again, something to keep in mind. The last solution that I use most often is the Kessler camera control module. When paired with the Oracle, it's by far the most versatile of the group when shooting motion control time lapses. It allows you to do such things as shoot, move, shoot. I'll touch more on this combo when I do the motion control time lapse section. Now once you have a device that'll trigger your camera, you need to find a way to power it. And in front of me here, I have a few different options depending on your shooting scenario. When shooting shorter time lapses, I use both the Canon and No Name batteries. The No Name batteries are great because they're a fraction of the price of the Canon batteries, um, but you want to make sure you purchase ones that uh, you can charge on the Canon chargers. I know there's a few on the market that require proprietary chargers and you probably don't want to get those because you won't be able to charge all your batteries on the same chargers. One thing to also keep in mind is that with the Canon batteries, I found that they last longer than the no-name ones. So when I purchase new batteries, I tend to go the Canon route just because I know they last longer than the no-name ones. When shooting longer time lapses, there's a few different options you can choose between. The first are battery grips, and I've got two different ones here. I've got the Canon battery grip and the no-name one. In this situation, I definitely recommend going the route of the Canon battery grip because it's much more reliable than the no-name one is. Now what makes the battery grip special is the ability to insert two batteries. So the life of your bat uh, camera would be twice as long as it would be without the battery grip. I get approximately six hours. Again, that depends on how old your batteries are. Now the second option you have is the Kessler Crane battery adapter. Um, if you go this route, you're gonna also need to purchase a battery and Kessler Crane has three different options for batteries. Uh, right now, uh, in front of me here, I have the little or small Bescor battery, the larger Bescor battery, and in two weeks, they're gonna be releasing the new lithium iron battery as well. I'll include a description of uh, the lithium iron battery in the blog post below. Now, the last option I have here is the Canon AC or wall adapter. With this one, you can do multi-day time lapses if you have access to AC. However, if you don't have access to AC and you wanna do the multi-day time lapses, I'd recommend going the route of the Kessler battery adapter with one of the three battery options. There are a few other essential elements that I have in my kit as well when I'm shooting. 
I'll cover them more extensively when we actually shoot the time lapses. Now the first thing you're going to want to have in your kit are filters. And there's a few different solutions on the market. There's three different types of filters I use when I'm shooting. I use polarizing filters, very ND filters, and grad filters. There are a few different brands to choose between with different price levels as well. Obviously the more you spend, the better they'll be. You will also want to make sure both your lens and sensors are clean. I don't know how many shots I've ruined from either having a dirty lens or sensor. Take 10 minutes after your shoot to make sure both are clean. It'll help with the longevity of your gear. Now, there's a few different tools I use to make sure both are clean. I use sensor cleaners, lens wipes, lens cloths, and an air puffer. In a future video, I'll be showing you how to clean both your sensor and your lenses. As for media, I've had great success with the Transcend cards. The price point is great, and I've yet to have any issues with either buffering time or corrupt files. Another piece of gear I have in my kit is my phone. And on my phone, there are a few different apps I use that help when shooting time lapses. And the first app I want to talk about is the Kessler app, which has a lot of great tools built in, including the time lapse calculator. Now, if you look in the blog post below, I've included the full list of apps that I use when shooting a time lapse. In a future video, I'll be going over all the different apps and how it fits into my time lapse workflow. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with are the different types of support gear I use for each different time lapse setup. The first type of time lapse we want to look at are static time lapses, and there's a few variables to consider when you're selecting your gear. You're going to want to know the type of shot you want to accomplish, as well as the environments you're shooting in. There are three different types of tripods that I use. When I'm hiking longer distances, I'll use both the lightweight carbon fiber tripods and Gorilla Pods. Now brands don't matter on either of these items, but I will be including that information in the blog post below. Now what I like about this design is that it's both lightweight and compact, so you can have it with your kit at all times. However, you are limited on the types of shots you could accomplish, and you're also limited on the weight capacity of this as well. Now, what I like about the lightweight carbon fiber tripods is also uh, the fact that they are uh, lightweight and compact as well. However, if you're shooting in either windy conditions or uneven surfaces such as sand, you do have to worry about the stability of this device. Uh, there are a few different things you can do to help with that, such as attach weights to the bottom here. And I'll show you in a future video how to help with the stability of this when you are hiking up mountains. Now the most versatile of these three tripods is the heavy duty carbon fiber tripod. Now if you're not hiking up mountains, uh, this is definitely the option I'd recommend because of its, its reach. Uh, at its lowest height, you can get it about a foot off the ground here. And I'll quickly show you how to do that. You just lower the legs. And then I want to spread these legs here. And at that height, you're about a foot off the ground. And then with the same tripod, you can extend the legs and you're approximately eight feet in the air. So if you're not hiking long distances, this is definitely my go-to solution. When you're either doing astro time lapses, day to night time lapses, walk lapses, boat lapses, or ball wrapping, it's extremely important you have a solid foundation. So in every one of those situations, I definitely recommend using a heavy duty tripod. I'll go more extensively into the rigging for each in a future video. Now, if you're just getting into shooting time lapses and are unsure what gear to purchase or your budget won't allow for the gear I'm using, just keep the basic elements in mind. Lighter tripods for longer hikes, heavy duty tripods for most other applications. Basically any tripod will work. However, if you are spending any money on any gear, I recommend first purchasing a heavy duty tripod. In most situations, your support gear will outlast the life of your cameras.
last section I want to talk about in this video are your motion control options. I'm going to be focusing exclusively on Kessler gear. If you have any questions or are hoping I was going to feature other gear as well, please read either the ethics statement or blog post below. Kessler has a few different options depending on your shooting scenario. If you're either hiking or traveling, they have three different options for you. They have the 18 inch length mini, the two foot traveler, and with both of these here, these will pack down into your standard suitcase. Now, if you're wanting something a little bit longer, they de uh, developed a new product as well, which is the shuttle pod mini. And with the shuttle pod mini, you can just keep adding rails and make it go as long as you want. Um, they have different rail lengths in either two feet, three feet, or four feet. So you can take this whole setup, throw it in a backpack and hike up a mountain with it. If you're not looking for a compact solution, you also have two other options. You have the cine slider, which comes in either three feet or five feet lengths. And if you want it to go longer than uh, the five foot length, you want to go with the full size shuttle pod. And with the full size shuttle pod, you can just keep adding rails, very similar to the shuttle pod mini. Now, if you look in this case here, I've got 24 feet of track in here. So you can kind of see how small that whole kit breaks down. Now, what I love about Kessler gear is its versatility. It's basically a rector set for filmmakers. So any setup you could think of, you can pretty much do with this gear. Now, obviously this is just a quick look at some options for motion control time lapses. I'll go more in depth in future videos, including how to do three axis moves as well.